welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and today we're going to be showing you how to build the FT SE5 biplane. Now, if you haven't seen the SE5 biplane review, check out the link below. It's a great little plane that builds fast and looks great. Now, this little guy powers off of our F Pack, so if you want to, you can go to our store, get the F Pack, and also support us by getting the Speedboat Kit. And a big thank you to Dan Sponholes. If you're downloading our free plans, you're going to notice that they're incredible and well laid out. That's from Dan Sponholes. Also, Richard Kennedy has designed a great simulator to be able to help you fly this before you fly it in person to make sure you have all the skills needed to have a great experience. If you like the way these planes look, Steven, also known as Rasterize on the forums, designed some beautiful skins and we have a link down below for the video on how to apply them. Let's get your materials in order and we'll get started. In this portion of the build, we're going to be showing you how to build the power pod, mount the motor, install the ESC, and make sure your motor is spinning in the proper direction. Now before we get started on the main portion of our build, the first thing we're going to want to assemble is our power pod. This portion right here, along with the firewall, is our power pod. This is going to carry our motor and ESC, and also interchange from many of the other mini swappables. An easy tip for not cutting through the paper is to dull the very tip of your knife. Now you can do this by rubbing it over a piece of sandpaper, or just simply take it down to the floor and drag it on the concrete a couple times. Don't do this if you have carpet. To get started with our power pod, we're first going to do a light score down through our two score lines. Now if you're scratch building, this is going to be indicated by a red line. Just take the blade down close to the paper, but don't go through it. We're going to fold 180 degrees over and peel off the foam. We're going to do this on both sides. Right, now that our cavities are cleared out, we're going to go ahead and do an A-fold. An A-fold is where the side cheeks go above the bottom plate. To practice this move for gluing, we're going to keep the side plate firmly against the table and rotate the bottom plate 90 degrees while pushing down firmly on the table. This is going to give us a nice clean 90 degree edge with the bottom plate below the side plate. Once we practice that move, we're going to put a thin bead of glue, starting and stopping the bead of glue about a quarter inch from the edge. Once we have that, we're going to rotate 90 degrees and we're going to hold it there for about 45 seconds. We're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. We're going to focus the main portion of glue on an A-fold on the bottom of the side plate. That way we get most of the strength in our joint and not on the paper. Once again, our side plate is on the, on the bottom. Rotate it 90 degrees and hold for 45 seconds. At this point we're ready to glue on our firewall. For reference on what side we glue the firewall, we're going to look at what direction the A is pointing to. On many of our little mini models we have quite a degree of right thrust and we want to be able to keep that to keep the performance good. On different models it may be pointing towards a flat 90 degree angle and that will be on things like the arrow and the sparrow. Once we have the side that we need, we're going to put a healthy bead of glue on the very top surface We're going to drop our firewall in. While that's drying, we're going to take off about five inches of packing tape. And we're going to go right over the top, centering it up, pushing down towards the sides. This is going to be where all your strength is coming from, not from the glue. So don't neglect this step or your motor is going to pop off in flight or during an impact on the ground. Just like wrapping a gift for Christmas, we're going to cut two little reliefs. We're going to fold the edges in. Now we can go back and cut off any excess that we may have. Now at this point it's very important that we remove the tape from the center section and also where our screw holes are going to be. If we don't remove this tape, the shaft of the motor is going to rub against that and it's going to cause it to bind and make you think that you have an ESC or a motor problem. It's easy to overheat the ESC if you don't do this step and destroy it. So now our center hole is opened up and I've also relieved 
both the bigger holes for the 2204 motor. Now this mini power pod can carry an 1806 A-Pack or a 2204 motor, which is the B-Pack right here. The 1806 will use the two thinner holes that are vertical. The 2204 will use the horizontal holes that are bigger. I'm going to install the F-Pack or the 2204 motor right now. This motor is real nice. It even comes with a little Allen wrench for you to use. We're going to take this apart. Notice we have bullet connectors so there's no solder needed. We make sure that every power pack that we carry in our store has bullet connectors so it's just plug and play. You don't need to solder. Now I want to take special attention towards these screws. You're going to notice a couple of these screws are shorter than the other ones. This is very important. We want to separate the long and the short screws from each other and get the long screws completely out of the picture. Reason being is we're only going to use the short screws in this step. Now this is the same for the A-pack as well. If you run the long screws through the firewall, it's going to hit the windings and it's going to cause the motor to short out and potentially destroy your motor and your ESC and void your warranty. So make sure you separate these screws right now. With our short screws isolated and ready to be used, I'm going to go ahead and just open up these holes just a little bit. I'm actually going to just use the tip of my uh, Allen wrench here with a little twisting motion. Just open it up a touch. This is going to make installing our motors even easier. There we go. If you have any hot glue in the back, just knock that out of the way. Make sure your screws can pass through nice and easy. We're going to go ahead and pre-thread our short screw. Notice I'm saying short a lot, it's because it's so important. Most of the time when you have a motor or ESC problem, it's because too long the screws have come in and hit the windings on the motor. Or that you have tape in the center section. I'm going to screw this down to just bring it out maybe a half a millimeter, just enough for the threads to engage with the motor. I'm going to do that on both sides. There we go. Now the motor has two spacings. It has a short width and a long width. I believe this is 16 millimeters and this is 19 millimeters. We're going to focus on the portion that's 16 millimeters. We're going to wiggle it around until it centers up right over those screws. There, you kind of hear it pop in there. Now we're going to go back and forth just a half turn at a time until we feel both screws engaging. We don't want to lift our motor off of the firewall. We want the screw to engage the back of the motor and to thread in nice and even. So when we tighten this down, the motor ends up firmly against the firewall and not lift it off. While we're doing this, you'll see that there's a gap in here between the motor. You can inspect that every couple turns to make sure that the threads don't get anywhere close to the windings. Do this on every motor you install, not just the power pods, but quadcopters, planes, anything that you install, make sure that those screws are not too long. Now that our motor is installed into our power pod, we're going to go ahead and connect our ESC. You're going to see three wires that will plug right in to our motor. Once again, if you're using any of our power packs, all these bullets are pre-soldered to go with the proper motors, so just plug and play. One thing you want to make sure is don't leave these out just a little bit so they can touch and short out. That's going to burn up your motor and your ESC. Make sure they're nice and closed and there's no exposed brass. Now that we have that, we can take this over to our little servo centering tool. And I'm going to turn it to manual and turn it all the way to zero. I'm going to plug in the lead of our ESC. Now that we have that, I'm going to plug this in. It's now activated three beeps, means it's a three cell battery. I'm going to turn this very slowly. Now you're going to see that this motor is turning clockwise. We want this to spin counterclockwise because this is a tractor style plane that it's installing into. It's not a wing. So because of that, I'm going to take two of these leads and I'm going to swap them. In our beginner series, we cover a lot of the details on how these motors work, the science behind it, and also things like ESC calibrations, etc. Now that we swapped this, I'm going to power it up. And now the motor spins counterclockwise, and that's the direction we want. Always make sure, especially with the minis, that if you have right thrust, you want this to spin counterclockwise. Otherwise, it's going to pull off to the left, and you won't be able to recover from it. Our motor is now spinning properly. We're ready for our build. In this portion of the build, we're going to be making the main portion of our fuselage and getting it ready for the tail. Now, before we start on the fuselage, you're going to want to remove the pieces that you see right here. 
We're going to go ahead and go to each piece and we're going to remove foam in strategic locations to give ourselves the cavities we need to fold the plane together. Take a moment and make sure you see all the pieces that you need right here. We're going to trace along each score line and for those that are scratch building the score lines are going to be indicated with red. We're going to score every line that we have on the fuselage and then we're going to go back and remove the foam. Once we have all our pieces scored, we're going to go ahead and remove strategically the pieces of foam that we need. The easiest way to do this on single folds is simply hold the main piece and with your fingernails press it in and rotate it out and let it peel off the bottom layer of paper. The goal is to get the, all the foam removed from the cavity in one piece and have nothing left over but the paper underneath. While we're removing the foam, we can also knock out the tabs of the extra pieces that we don't need. If you're new to the hobby and these techniques of building, you can always practice on scrap pieces of foam included with your kit, or if you're scratch building extra pieces of foam that you purchased. Now if you're scratch building, you may notice that a lot of this is brown, where when you go to scratch build, it's white Adams foam. The reason behind is our foam board is actually water resistant and will hold up the paint and moisture very well. With these pieces here, we're also going to remove the paper from the inside of the reinforcement cheeks. So first we're going to get this cavity opened up. And we're also going to come along. You don't need to remove every square inch of this, but you want to get as much of this brown, or in the case of scratch build, and white foam off as possible. The brown paper sticks a lot better than the white, so it may come off in multiple pieces. While we're removing the paper, let's go ahead and also remove the paper from the front end of the fuselage bottom piece. Oftentimes we remove the paper for two reasons. It's either to make the foam slightly thinner or it's to make the foam able to be bent. There we go. What I'm going to do now is lay all this out and feel free to pause this and make sure that all your pieces represent what you see here. We're first going to start by putting these pieces aside here and working on the main portion of our fuselage. Now if this is your first time build, you're going to see a lot of common things. Blue oftentimes in indicates a location or a crease, red indicates a score cut, and A folds and B folds. We're going to start by talking about some of our folds, but the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and establish a crease on these two lines right here. We're going to do this by holding down with our hands and lifting up very gently. Now if you're scratch building, you're going to need to put a little bit of an indent with the tip of a ballpoint pen or your fingernail where the crease lines are, just to tell the foam where to crease. Make sure you lift up on both ends enough so it relaxes at the same angle that it's going to fold into. Now that we have this done, we're going to perform an A-fold on the support piece in the center. This is going to give us strength, but it's also going to help us square up the fuselage very nicely. So we're going to go ahead and practice this fold. An A-fold is where the side cheek, which is this, is above the bottom plate. So whenever we talk about A-fold and B-fold, we always talk about the orientation it's going to be from the side to the top or bottom plate. This is a very common technique in all of our 40 plus designs. So right here we have the side plate above the bottom plate, and that's exactly what we want. So now that we know that it folds nice and perpendicular, we're going to keep our triangle or our square next to us. And we're going to focus a thin bead of glue, starting and stopping about a quarter inch from the edge. Once we have this, we're going to fold this back up again. And we're going to take our triangle, and we're going to hold it up against the fuselage. Make sure if you have any extra glue coming down to the cavities that you remove it. You can do that with a scrap piece of foam. After about 40 seconds, this should be dry enough. We can open this up and make sure that we have no glue on our cavities for the next step. Anytime you have any debris down in these cavities, it's going to cause it to bend and fold a little bit funny and possibly get out of square. Now let's go ahead and practice a B-fold. A B-fold is exactly what you see in this little diagram that's etched in the plans 
or on your kit. That's where the side plates are beside the bottom plate. So think A above and B beside. One of our great community members came up with that. We're going to go and practice that fit now. We're going to keep the bottom here flat up against the table. We're going to rotate this up 90 degrees and we're going to make sure that it folds and pushes firmly against the table. Once we're happy with the fit and it folds nice and perpendicular, we're going to come back with the glue. Now since it's a B-fold, we're going to focus most of our glue on the side of the bottom plate. We want to put the glue where it provides the most strength. We're going to go along the bottom plate and then up the side of the vertical plate. Anytime we do a fold, we're always going to use the table as our friend. We're going to fold this up 90 degrees, pushing down against the table so we get a nice square edge and keeping up against the side plate. Now we're not just going to use the side plate, we're going to come back with our triangle and we're going to hold it in three different locations for about 15 seconds each. We'll start at the nose, go to the midsection, and then we'll finish at the tail. After about 45 seconds you're done. If it ends up gluing to the table a little bit, you can rock it loose. Let's go and inspect our edge. We have a nice clean square edge. And that's exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and repeat the exact same process on the other side. We got our hot glue gun. Once again, starting and stopping about a quarter inch from the edge so it doesn't spill over. Up the vertical plate. And onto the front. Rotate 90 degrees once again, pushing firmly against the table. And don't be afraid to get your head down in there. Look at all your seams, look at all your folds, make sure nothing's twisting. And always keep your triangle or your square candy to make sure everything's staying nice and square. If your fuselage gets twisted, your wings and your tail are going to be twisted. And it may fly okay, but it's going to look kind of funny. The more square you keep everything, the better the plane's going to perform and look. All right, after our 45 seconds is done, we have a nice looking fuselage. Now just to give you some orientation here, because we built this upside down, I want to be able to help you out with kind of explaining what this is. This is the front of the fuselage, this is the tail, and this is the top surface here and here. Whenever we're talking about right and left, it's as if you're sitting in the cockpit yourself. So this is the right side face, this is the left side face, and of course this will be the bottom surface. And that's what we're going to work on next. For the bottom surface, we're going to get this piece that you see right here. Now don't knock this piece out quite yet. We're going to save that till later. But we are going to test fit it right now. We're going to slide this in. And if we did our job right, we should be able to slide it just to the very end here. You can push it back, but don't do that. Line up right at the very back. And just confirm that you have a nice square edge. And we do. And once you're happy with the fit and the motion it takes to get that fit in, we're going to go ahead and focus the glue down. And since it's a B-fold, we're going to put the glue mostly on the side of the bottom plate. Start and stop about a quarter inch from the edge. Back upside down, make sure you don't burn your fingers. And we're going to slide this into position. Once we have this slid into position, we're going to flip it over 180 degrees and we're going to hold it firmly against the bottom of the table and then come back with our square. This is finishing off the box of the box fuselage, and this is the last opportunity you have to get everything perpendicular. So check it in multiple locations, make sure it's nice and square, and always do the downforce. Don't do so much that it crinkles the foam, but as you build more and more models, it's going to get easier and easier, and you're going to learn how to handle the fuselage. We call these Mighty Minis for a reason, because they can take a tremendous hit and they're very strong. So the better your glue joints are, the better the fits are, the better the crashes it'll handle. So after about a 45 seconds to a minute, we can lift this up. We always want to inspect our seams to make sure we're happy with it. And that looks fantastic. So leaving the plane on its back here, we're going to go ahead and put our attention towards the top reinforcement plate, which is this right here. Now you're going to notice that this has a double thickness of the foam. And that's because as we place this in, we're going to line up this edge with the very front edge here. It's going to be a slight friction fit. And once we have this lined up with the edge, you're going to notice that this nose will bend around and under a little bit of tension, come straight up. This is to give you a nice sealed look and a finished look on the front of your airplane. 
So now that we know that it fits and we're happy with that, we're gonna go ahead and remove this. I'm gonna put a light thin bead of glue, leaving this portion for a second later. Repeat the exact same motion again, lining it up, lining up the front edge here, and then we're gonna go right back down to the table and press firmly down. Whenever we have items like this, you want to make sure that the glue is not building up a thickness that's going to cause fit issues later. In a moment, we're going to be putting our side cheeks on, and if the glue is too thick, the power pod's going to be too tight to squeeze in easily. My next step is that we're going to focus the glue on this back panel here. And be careful because the hot glue does transfer heat through the paper very easily. Back down to the table to hold it at a 90 degree angle. These are our little cardboard building mats that we sell in our store. A really cool tip to make these last a long time is when you purchase these and they're nice and clean, mist them with about four layers of camp track. That's going to put a light silicone layer down and that's going to keep the glue from sticking as easy where it just picks off with your nail. Now that our top reinforcement plate is put in, we're going to go ahead and take our focus on the side plates. To do this, we're going to go ahead and do a test fit. When we fold this down, what we don't want to see is where one edge is not meeting the other. We want to see it nice and flat against each other. Like that. Once we have that, we can come back with some hot glue. Just with a light layer on both sides. First we're going to go down against the table. Squeeze it together. Line up our edges. And once we have that lined up, we're going to turn it horizontal and put a nice even pressure to get it as thin as possible. All these techniques, A-fold, B-folds, fold-overs, uh, these are all common on all 40 plus of our designs and we add about one a month. So once you have these techniques down, you can look at any one of our designs and know that you can build it. Let's go ahead and do the exact same process on the other side. Feed the glue down the middle. I just like to do a light trace, a couple squiggles. More glue doesn't mean more strength, but it does mean more weight, so be careful. Straight down against the table to get that nice square edge. And then we're horizontal again, making it as flat as possible. Whenever you're putting pressure on foam, it's much better to put even flat pressure than focus pinpoint pressure. So try to keep your hands as flat as possible and your pressure as even as possible, even if you have to use weights. Now it's time for a test fit. With these, it's not gonna come up flush against the very front here, but it's actually gonna set back. The easiest way to tell how far back to set it is at the leading edge of the slot for the wing is gonna line up with the back of your doubler. What we wanna see is roughly one thickness of foam all around the edge. Once we're happy with that fit, we're gonna come back, and we're gonna put a thin bead of glue on the side plate we can even put a little one on the top. This is going to add a huge amount of strength. Just be careful when handling it so you don't burn yourself. We're going to try to keep the glue from coming up to where we need to use it later. If it does squeeze out a little bit, just pick it off. Once we have it positioned, we're going to hold it nice and flat and push really hard against the table. After 45 seconds or so, we're going to flip it and do the exact same process on the other side. Always check your fit before gluing it down. You'll notice that the relief is just slightly thinner. That's because the paper's peeled off the foam and the foam is much more pliable than with the paper on. So it's actually gonna crush into the undercuts on the laser kit and make a very nice tight seam. I like to start a little bit back and kind of push it forward so the glue doesn't spill over in the relief that we need. Then you're holding it for 45 seconds again. With our side cheeks on, we're gonna put our attention towards the bottom of the nose piece. The first thing that we need to do is we need to do two B folds. We're going to do this one at a time even though it's very tempting to do both. But let's go ahead and fold them, make sure they fit nice and snug. And they do. And now we're going to come back and we're going to only squeeze the trigger in a way to dispense glue from quarter inch to quarter inch from the edge. Go ahead and practice on a piece of scrap paper if you're ever wondering about how to dispense glue nice and smooth and how to start and stop it. Back to the table. 
side plate goes beside the bottom plate, and we're going to hold for a 90. Back down on the table, hold the 90 again. All right, our B-folds are now done. Once again, if you look at the side of this, it'll look just like the diagram here. And we're going to go ahead and do a test fit. Now I'm going to bring this to the front of the build table here and let this overhang the edge so I don't damage the front former. I'm going to take the back of my wing saddle piece and I'm going to press this in. It should kind of friction fit in very nicely. And then holding my hand on the back, I'm slowly going to allow this to crease around. I'm doing one side at a time to the point where it meets up down here. Once I have that mark, I'm going to press in just a little bit making an indent. I'm going to go ahead and do this on both sides. And that indent is going to be the reference line of where we need to cut. Once we have those reference lines figured out, we're going to go ahead and cut them off. Now with our fuselage positioned in the front with the former hanging over, we're going to do one last test fit before putting glue on. Looks good. Looks good. Now for applying the glue, on this portion here we're going to focus our nozzle down between where the foam meets the paper. And we're going to do this on both sides here and here. For the doublers, we're going to put a nice healthy bead on top of the doubler. Now because we're putting more glue on the doubler, it means it's going to dry slower. So I'm going to do that portion first. Gravity will kind of help me take that extra glue down to the bottom. Now I'm only going to put glue between the paper and the foam, about a medium bead. Medium bead is just under an eighth of an inch. And then making sure I don't burn my hands, I'm going to repeat the same step I've done now about four times. We're going to go on the flat, make sure it notches in, and we're going to fold this down on both sides. I'm focusing my fingers where the foam is so I don't burn my fingers. But after about 15 seconds of holding it here, I'm going to go ahead and flip this over 180 degrees, nice and flat. Put most of my force down on the table. 15 seconds there, we roll it forward. 10 to 15 seconds, we roll it backwards. What we're doing is we're pushing the foam up against the doublers and making sure our glue joint is nice and solid. So if we did this right, what you're going to end up with is a very nice clean doubler and a very nice clean fuselage. This portion here we can just put a little piece of tape on because we're going to open this up later for our wing and our landing gear. But for now, it can stay closed. Now we have three formers left in the build of our fuselage, but we're not going to put them on until just before our poster board. So put these aside someplace safe. You're going to have two that are the same and one that's different. We're now ready to go ahead and put our attention towards the tail, the servos, and the push rods. In this portion of the build, we're going to center up our servos and install the control horns. Now it's really important before we install the servos that we center them and we also install the proper servo horns. This is going to change from model to model. So in this one here, these are the 9051s. This process is the same even if you're using the ES0882s, which are 9 gram servos. These are 4.5 grams. In this build, we're going to be using the smaller of the X control horns, which is this one right here. Now you're going to notice that there's two arms that are longer and two arms that are shorter. We're going to preserve only one of the shortest arms. So we're going to take this and flip it over on its back, and we're going to cut off the extra three. Watch your eyes. These servos are incredibly high quality, even though they're very economical. I'm going to put this on to show you how well centered they are from the factory. I'm going to plug this into our servo centering tool. If you don't have one of these tools, it is so convenient and so useful in so many ways. I strongly recommend you getting it. This is only about 7 bucks from our store. We'll have a link down below for you to use. On the side of a servo centering tool, you're going to notice three indicators. You got your servo, which is your signal wire, your positive, and your negative. We're going to line up the ground wire with the negative, the power is in the middle, and the signal wire, which is usually white or yellow, will be on the top. 
For powering this, a simple quick tip that you can do if you don't have a single cell battery is using the balance lead of a two or three cell battery. Now you're gonna notice on the battery, you always have a power indicated wire. So here's your positive red. All the rest are considered negatives. And we're gonna only take the red one up to line up with the power and the ground on the servo centering tool. You don't wanna put a two cell on this because it's gonna destroy your tool and your servos and void your warranty. So now I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna plug my power line into the middle my ground going down towards the bottom, and now I have one cell worth of power. Now you're gonna notice that these multiple ports are here. It doesn't matter which plug you plug in to power your unit, and you can center three servos at one time. This tool also works to test motors and ESCs. Now that we have this, you can see that I can move my servo back and forth with no problem. Now I was talking about how well centered this is up. I'm gonna turn this to the extreme, and I'm gonna clip center, and you're gonna see it's spot on from the factory. You never want to take this for granted because if you do and you install this and you need to power it on, you're going to use all your sub trims and all your trim to override it. What centered servo technically is, is basically just telling the servo to be in the center position so it has equal throws both ways. Now with this servo guide, if I flip the center and you see something like this, all you need to do is install your servo horn at 90 degrees. Once we're happy with that center, we're going to drop in the shortest little screw and twist it down in. You notice with my fingers I supported the screw as I turned it in so I didn't strip out the gears. Now we're going to do the exact same on the opposite one. The only difference is we want this servo horn to go the other direction. Kaboom skis. Plug it in. There you go, once again, centered beautifully. Drop the shortest screw in our pack in there. And there we have it. The Emacs servo is one of our favorite servos. We've been using them forever. The only time we ever get failures is in a very hard crash or if someone puts too much voltage through it. All right, our servos are now centered. Our control horns are on. We're ready to move to the next step. In this portion of the build, we're going to be cutting our hinge line for our tail assembly, installing our tail onto the fuselage, and installing our push rods and servos. So in this portion of the build, we're going to want to get a couple pieces ready for our tail assembly. We're going to want to have our two centered servos, our rudder assembly, and our elevator assembly, along with our push rods, control horns, right here. We're going to put these pieces aside for the moment and get our tail assembly ready. The first thing we're going to work on is our elevator. To get this seam cut, we're going to go ahead and lay this nice and flat, and we're going to fold this 180 degrees. Now typically the bevel cut goes on the side that moves, but because this area is so thin and it's made out of foam, we're going to put our attention on putting the bevel cut on the main stabilizer side. That way it's a little bit more durable. To do our bevel cut, we're going to take it to the edge of the table and holding our blade in an acute angle. What we don't want is the blade to be this direction because it's going to wander very easily. Hold it at a nice acute angle, just above the fold in the paper. Your blade should be nice and sharp. Once again in our crafty kit, we have a very high grade Japanese steel blade called Ofa. And it cuts right through it. Don't feel like you have to get this perfect every single time. You can always go through again and make light minute cuts and get it just right. Now, if you're building with someone younger and you don't want them to use razor blades, we have a link below on how to build our speedboat kits without the use of razor blades. Let's go ahead and do the same process on the rudder. Here's our seam. We're gonna fold 180 degrees, but this time our bevel is gonna go on our rudder portion, right here. So we're back down on the table, holding at a nice cute angle, keeping that blade just above the paper. You want to make sure you have easy motion that's not binding on full deflection. If at any point you go through the paper on the other side, don't worry about it. If it's too big, just take a piece of tape right over the seam and you're good to go. In our speedboat kits, there's lots of pieces you can rip off that look similar to this. What I'd recommend is just cut a couple pieces and have them laying by you to be able to smear the glue where you don't want to burn your fingers. 
We're going to do a technique to reinforce these hinges because what we don't want is after a few crashes is for the paper to delaminate against the foam. So keeping our scrap foam handy, we're going to take our hot glue gun and we're going to focus the tip of the nozzle right on the paper in the center and put down a thin ribbon. Now this is something I definitely recommend practicing on a scrap piece of foam. Cut a bevel cut and practice scraping off the excess. You go on to push the glue down as well as scrape it off. You only go on to leave a thin, thin film that's going to reinforce the area but not build it up. Make sure you leave this area open while the glue dries so you don't glue it together. Once it's dried, test the motion and make sure there's no restrictions on motion. If you do have restrictions where you didn't before, open this up and take a razor blade and cut any debris of glue off of the hinge line. We're going to do the exact same process now on our elevator. We're going to open it up nice and wide, taking our nozzle right down against the paper and applying a thin bead of glue. Coming back with a little scrap piece of foam, pressing it down into the foam and into the paper and removing any excess. Once the hot glue starts balling up, you know it's dried enough and at that point you can't really remove anymore without balling it up. Give it about 35-45 seconds to dry, move it, and we're ready for the next step. At this point we're ready to put the tail pieces together. We have the elevator and the fin assembly ready to come together. Now if you built the triplane, this is slightly different, so make sure you follow these steps for the SE5. The first thing we're going to do is with our hinge cut facing down and our paper facing top, we're going to go ahead and take our fin and hold the back piece in slide it through the notch and press it into place. This bottom piece can then swing 180 degrees and meet up with its mate. Now it's very easy to have this not be perpendicular so keep your square handy to make sure that we hold it into place. For this top surface all we're going to do is keep our scrap foam handy and we're going to put a thin bead of glue where the fin and the elevator meet. Take our scrap foam, press it down in and remove any excess. While that's drying, I'm going to hold the square on the other side, keep it nice and perpendicular. Give this about 45 seconds. We're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. Thin bead of glue. Scrape off the excess and then come back with the square to hold it perpendicular. Now with this bottom portion we can flip this 90 degrees and put a bead of glue right over top of where the fin joins. These planes have a tendency to come out tail heavy very easy so make sure you keep your glue to a minimum. Anytime you have an opportunity to scrape off excess go ahead and do so. And with like everything else, with every step, we're going to come back to make sure everything's perpendicular. At this point, we're ready to install the tail assembly onto the fuselage. The first thing that we want to do, though, is we want to prepare the fuselage. And we're going to do that by taking a square or a ruler and completing the cut that we have in the bottom here. The reason we didn't do this earlier is because it would be very hard to deal with this piece without it crinkling and getting messed up. So all we're going to do is take our ruler and follow this line all the way to the end. Light score cut, deeper all the way through. Once again, light score cut, press down a little further, all the way through. If there's any other things like this little knockout for our control horn or this top piece here, go ahead and remove them now. Our bottom slot is cut, we're going to repeat the exact same process on this top notch as well. Coming back with the square. cutting down through on both sides. Now for assembling our fin into the fuselage, we're going to go ahead and pinch this area down right here just to make it glide through a little bit easier. Once we have that pinched, we're going to line it up through the slot, rock it a little bit. We're going to get our stabilizer to go through the horizontal slots in the middle. 
and very carefully and gently, we're going to slide this forward until it goes all the way to the front edge. You're going to know you're there when it engages the notch and the trail of the fuselage is lined up with the hinge line. The best thing I can advise now is that we turn this around and then we make sure there's nothing too alarming. It's going to be very difficult to make sure this is square, but what we should see is a 90 degree angle between the fuselage and the tail assembly. These notches are going to make this very perpendicular to the fuselage, but just give it a visual check to make sure that it's not rotated too far one way or the other. Once we're happy with the look and the fit of everything, we're going to go back once again and put a very thin bead of glue. This time I'll just do one side at a time. Come back with our scrap piece, scrape off the excess. Do the exact same process on the other side. We're doing two things when we press this down with a scrap piece of foam. We're driving the glue down into the joint where it makes it the most strong, and we're also removing extra weight. Now that our tail assembly is firmly glued on, we're going to go ahead and put our attention towards installing the push rods. Now with the Z-Bend being towards the control surfaces, we're going to glide our push rods through the slot. It's a very easy thing just to drag it a couple times just to remove some of the tension that it'll have on the wire. And with this kind of following the contour of the fuselage, we're going to push this forward up to the point where we come in contact with the little holes down in the center. Now, it's very difficult to see. I'm going to put my finger there. It's very difficult to see, but we're going to guide the push rod through the holes. There we go. And as we guide it through, it's going to protrude out the hole on the other side. Don't cut this short just yet. Just pick this up and pull it through to where the Z-Bend ends right around the hinge line. For the push rod on the opposite side of the notch, you're going to notice if we did everything right that you should have a little notch for the elevator. That's the first one we're going to do. With our Z-Bend facing up and our control horn going on, we're going to slide the control horn on and press it down into the little slot on the elevator. So it's going to push through the foam and kind of see. What we want to see is we want to see the hinge line and the hole line up with each other. That's going to give you even deflection both up and down. Once we're happy with that and the motion that we have, we can remove this carefully and then come back with a little drop of glue right in the cavity that we made. And then we're firmly going to press down. Now what I want to encourage you to not do is to move this for at least a minute. After a minute has passed, we can go ahead and check our motion and that looks great. Now we're going to put our attention towards the push rod on the rudder side. Same process as before. Z-bend towards the hinge line. Drag our push rod down through, open that up just a little bit. And we're back lining it up with the hole and our center support. Take our push rod wire, pull it up once again. And we're going to install the control horn onto our rudder side. We're going to press this down into the slot that's created in our kit. This is going to line up our control horn perfectly with the hinge line on the rudder. Now look for motion, make sure there's no binding. Once we're happy with that, we're going to remove this and expose the cavity. Come back with a little drop of glue. Be careful, the glue will push on the other side and burn your fingers if you're not careful. Press it through and hold it down for at least a minute. I can't stress how important it is to control the plane properly. These two joints are hard. So if you have to go back later with a drop of glue on both sides, that's okay. Just be cautious of the amount of weight that you put back by your tail. Let's check once again our motion. That looks really good. All right, we're ready to work on our servos. As we talked about before, it is very important that our servos are nice and centered, but also as we glue this down to the side cheeks here, 
We don't want to be gluing the sticker. So we're going to go ahead and carefully remove the sticker. And we're going to clean off the surface with alcohol and we're also going to scuff it up. To scuff it up, you can use really coarse sandpaper or you can simply use the edge of a razor blade and drag your knife over it a few times. Make sure you have a nice clean surface that the glue can stick to and adhere to because if this comes loose, you're not going to have any control over that surface. Do this on both surfaces. The side that we're going to be doing this to is going to be the side that the servo horn is opposite of. Now, if you're following along with our kit and you have our electronics, this control horn is the X control horn. I just cut down and left the shortest lobe on the four part control horn. We're removing the sticker, making sure it's nice and clean. Dragging the knife over it a few times. And now our servers are ready to go on. Our first tension we're going to put towards is going to be our elevator, and that's going to be this wire right here. We want our servos to come down roughly right in the middle of this area here, right over the CG. Now if you only have 9 gram servos, which are roughly twice the weight of this, that's okay. You can still use those. Just make sure you're over the center of gravity so it neither helps you nor hurts you. If you're going to be using a light A motor, make sure you get your servos as far forward as possible because every ounce and every gram is going to help you. But in this case, we're going to follow the stock build. It's going to go right over the middle. So for this step, I'm going to go ahead and take the push rod right around the middle. And just as this is naturally bending, I'm going to take a pair of pliers and I'm going to bend at a 90 degree angle going vertical. Doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle, just get as close as possible. There's our vertical bend. Now that we have our vertical bend, we're going to lift this up. And we're going to take our pliers, we're going to grip it about 2 millimeters on the top, just like this. We're going to rotate this 90 degrees. And this is what you call a modified Z-Bend. We don't need a modified Z-Bend, we need a standard Z-Bend. So we're going to take it from the top, and we're going to rotate this slowly 90 degrees forward. What you see here is very similar to what you have on the back end. There's no need to use linkage stoppers because the servos are going to be covered when you have this built. And you have full range of motion, so as long as your servos are properly centered, when you power this up, you'll have only minimal trim that you're going to need to do. I'm going to take a different pair of pliers, and by the way, Kevin Teschner, I'm still using these after four years. Thank you, brother. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off about a quarter inch in. While I have this extra piece of wire, I want to show you a common technique that people oftentimes want to do with their Z-Bends. When they do a Z-Bend, they want to grab it here, and then kind of grab it here, and then rotate it. Well, what happens is when you bend it this way, whether you're grabbing it here or grabbing it up here, you don't get a nice clean bend. Get something that looks like that. And even if you have small needle nose pliers, this area here is too deep. So we do have Z-Bend pliers that you can buy that you simply just crimp down and they work fantastic. But if you don't want to spend the money on that, the easiest way to do is establish your first bend, grab it about two millimeters in, establish your second bend. You can cut that off and have a modified Z-Bend or you can rotate it 90 degrees. And you see you have a much nicer Z-Bend than what you could ever get by doing it sequentially. Now that we have our Z-Bend on our first side, we have our servo centered, we're going to pass it through. I like to have as much length, so I'm going to have the servo wires going forward. Light rotation here. Light rotation will pass this through, and then knock it down on the notch. Make sure your wires don't get in the way so you don't glue your wires down. So where this push rod naturally lays is where we're going to want the servo to be mounted. But we also want to make sure that it's neutral. So we can take our square on the back end here. We can hold this down. If you have a friend, you can have them help you by holding this portion while we're working on it. But this area right here is exactly where we want it. Oftentimes I'll kind of just kind of push it into the foam and make a little indent to tell me where I want it to go. Once we're happy with that, we're going to repeat the exact same process. I'm going to put a nice healthy bead of glue. We're going to flip it down, let it naturally lay, make sure this is level, then we're going to hold it in place. The glue takes about 45 seconds to dry. Give yourself about 15 seconds of wiggle room, and then from that point on, all you want to give the servo is pressure. If you move this around, you're constantly going to be weakening that joint, and this whole servo assembly is going to be covered with poster board and make it very difficult to service in the future. So get your glue joint strong now. Alright, our minute's up. 
We're gonna do the exact same process on the other side. General recap, grab it out midline. Fold up 90 degrees, coming about two millimeters ahead of the bend. Fold horizontal. And then take it from a modified to a standard Z-bend. We're gonna grab it, very, very slowly bend to straight. Cut it about a centimeter or a quarter inch ahead. There's a little twist that's okay. Make sure our center, servo is centered. Bend this up. Press it through the hole. Down on our Z-bend. We're gonna let it find its natural location. We're gonna center up our control surface with our centered servo. And that's the portion where we're gonna glue it in. We can lift it up. Apply some glue on the scuffed area, let it naturally fall down, recenter our surface, and then press and hold for easily a minute. Doing this technique not only saves weight, saves money in linkage stoppers, and it also makes it very, very solid, and you don't ever have to worry about the linkage stopper letting go and having to pull off your poster board to service it. We're now done with our control surfaces and our push rods. We're ready to move on to the next step. In this portion of the build, we're gonna be providing the airfoil for both the top and the bottom wing, along with the dihedral. For both of our wing sections, both of our wings are gonna have assembly the exact same way. So go ahead and punch those pieces out now. You're gonna need your two dihedral gauges, your wing camber gauges, and your two wings. Let's go ahead and put our attention towards the bottom wing first. That's gonna be the one without the four holes in the center. Taking the barbecue skewer that's included in our kit, we're gonna go ahead and drag it down. Now typically I tell people not to push too deep, but in this case, we're gonna to wanna to leave a nice open area. So go ahead and take it all the way to the bottom of the paper without burning through. Once we have our crease made, we're gonna fold forward on the wing, establishing an under cambered angle. We wanna make sure that we don't have much resistance here. Once we have that, we're going to take our little gauges, we're going to put one on the outer edge, one towards the middle, and then the same on the other side of the wing. Let's make sure our billboard's nice and clean so we don't dent our foam. And we're going to set this down, and we're going to make sure that we can easily press this down and it, we don't have any different resistance from one end to the other. If we do, it's gonna cause the wing to warp slightly and it'll cause the plane to turn. Once we're happy with that, we're gonna take our hot glue gun. We're gonna put a nice healthy bead. Make sure you have a scrap piece of foam handy because we're gonna wipe off the excess in just a moment. Now we're going to press evenly down on both the left and the right side of the wing and let the front end come up and rest against the gauges. We're going to take a scrap piece of foam and press the excess glue back down in and then remove the excess. Now it's really important not to only hold the back portion in but to make sure the front portion isn't lifted up in any weird spot. Hold this position for about a minute. If the glue is still tacky, wait until it's nice and dry. Now that the glue is thoroughly dried, we can go ahead and lift it up and remove our little gauges. Our next step is to pop out these little guys here. This is going to be where our dihedral gauge is going to come into play. Do this on both sides of the wings. Make sure you hold on to your undercamber gauges because we're going to be using them for the second wing. All right. So the little holes popped out, you're going to notice on this gauge that the arrow pointing forward, this is going to go towards the leading edge of the wing. It's simply going to pop into place like you see here. We're going to do this on both sides of the wing, making sure the arrows are pointing forward. 
We're going to press down on the center section of the wing, making sure that our gauges on the, both the left and the right side are firmly seated against the build table. Once we're happy with that, we can lift up just a little bit. And let's keep a piece of scrap foam handy. We're going to take the tip of our nozzle and press a bead of glue right down in there. Don't worry about the excess, we're going to scrape it off. Get as much glue down in the slots as possible. Repeating the exact same motion before, making sure the outer panels are firmly against the side. We can scrape off any extra glue that we need to. Now what I'm doing is I'm not only holding the center section down, but I'm also keeping my eye on the outer wing panels. Because we have to let this sit for a couple minutes, one thing you can use is things like these. These are called one, two, three blocks. Chad Lewis here at the shop uses these all the time, but they work very handy as ways to hold things down. That way you're not tempted to move it too quickly. You're gonna to wanna to give this portion about two minutes to dry nice and thoroughly before moving it. Our two minutes is up. We're gonna go ahead and remove our weight. And by the way, you can get these on Amazon. I think they're called one, two, three blocks. They're well worth the investment. Get a few of them and leave them hanging around. All right. We're gonna go ahead and rotate this 180 degrees. And we're just gonna put a simple bead of glue right over these seams, because oftentimes the glue doesn't go all the way through the bottom. Take a scrap piece of foam, scrape it, push it into the slot, and scrape off the excess. Now we can put this wing to the side, let it finish drying, and we can do the exact same process on the top wing. For a simple recap, we're gonna take the blend of our barbecue skewer, Drag it through, open up a nice healthy channel. Once again, this is only for the Mighty Minis and these kind of planes with a single surface wing. Don't do this on your Versa wings, arrows, and other planes. Establish a nice healthy bend. Make sure that we have no resistance when our camber gauges go on. Install our four little gauges to make our airfoil. That feels good. Put a nice healthy bead right down into the cavity that we just opened. Right there. And as we press down, we're going to remove any excess that we have. Force as much glue into the gap as you take off. We can just put these blocks on right here. Go ahead and let this dry for about two minutes. All right, let's go ahead and move these. We're going to pop off our little gauges here, and now we can go ahead and take our little dihedral gauges and do the exact same process. Arrow points forwards. One quick test fit. Looks good. Press the hot glue, get as much down into that crack as possible. Scrape off the excess. A very common thing with foam board, it does oftentimes like to warp. Even the best foam board can have a little bit of a twist. I notice there's a little bit of twist here. I'm going to go ahead and just put a weight down here. Go ahead and let this dry for about two minutes. Our wings are now complete. We're ready to go on to our next step of the build. In this portion of the build, we're going to show you how to install your formers and add on your poster board, front and rear turtle decks. The pieces that we're going to need for installing the top turtle deck on the fuselage is going to be our main fuselage piece and our front and our rear turtle deck, along with the formers that we had out when we originally built our fuselage. Let's go ahead and start by putting our formers in. You're going to notice two of our formers are the exact same shape, and those are going to go ahead and pop in on the first two slots working from the nose. Here and here. Once you're happy with the fit, make sure they're centered. We can remove one at a time. And let's put just a little bit of glue on both the flats that are raised up. Let's repeat the same process on the back here. And while this is drying, 
we'll go ahead and do their rear. The rear is a slightly tighter fit. Go ahead and center it up as you need to. And one thing I like to do is just kick it back just a touch. There's no real science or gauge that needs to be done by it. It just gives the cockpit a nice scale look. Once we're happy with the fit, press it down in and let it dry. Now that our formers are glued in place, we're ready to put our back turtle deck on first. Now this may seem intimidating, but it's actually very simple if you go step by step. The first thing we want to do is dry fit this. We're going to let the back edge here come in contact with the very back of the fuselage here. This is going to give us a nice clean line on the back of the tail. This is where we're going to want a penetrator glue one side at a time to be able to hold this down nice and rigid as it is horizontal. Alright, so as the first one goes down, we're going to favor our nozzle right in between the two. Don't worry if you push it down a little bit. Just make sure when you reposition this, that's where we want it. Let me get that little extra part of glue there. Go ahead and hold this against the fin for at least 45 seconds to a minute. And then do the exact same process on the other side. Alright, our minute's up. We'll go ahead and go to the other side. Once again, nozzle going down between the foam and the paper. and press it hard up against the fin. If you have a little too much, you can go ahead and use a scrap piece of foam and take off the excess. Now that the rear portion of our turtle deck has been glued down, go ahead and lightly crease the foam and start molding it around the fuselage. Now as it gets further back here, the paper is going to be a little bit more rigid, so take your time so it doesn't break the joint on the glue. There we go. Our next step is to go ahead and lift this up and put a drop of glue right at the back of the smallest former. Now we're going to let this sit down on top of it and that's going to anchor that center point in place. Give us about 30 seconds to a minute to dry. Now this area is glued down and anchored, we're going to be able to work this against the foam board fuselage sides to get a nice tight seam. The technique that we're going to use with the table to get this down is going to be like this. We're going to put a thin bead of glue down and then we're going to go up against the table and then we're going to roll it onto the table, taking the flat of the fuselage and pushing against the poster board. This is going to hold this down nice and tight against the table without us having to use our fingers and getting burned. Let's go and do that now. Put a nice bead of glue down. I'm going to take it to the table. Roll it onto the table and hold down firmly. Give us about a minute to dry. After about a minute, you're going to see a nice clean seam on this back edge and it's going to be firmly glued to the fuselage. We're going to do the exact same process on the other side now. Keep that bead of glue as close to the very top edge as possible because you don't want to squeeze out and glue it to the table. Going back down. And we're holding for about a minute. The rear portion of our turtle deck's done. We're going to do the exact same process on the front now. You're going to notice some little notches that are centering notches for our poster board. And if you have our speedboat kit, we put the tab that breaks out right on the top center there. That way you have a very easy way to center up your poster board. We're going to put three drops of glue down just to tack our poster board in place. Line our little slots that are cut out in the poster board up with the center tab and let it dry. Our next step is to carefully mold the poster board over top of the top formers and get the paper to relax over the formers so it makes a nice arc. Make sure as you're wrapping it down you're also pushing down the poster board to keep it firmly against the formers. Once we're happy with that fit, we can take the nozzle of our hot glue gun and put a nice delicate bead along our formers. After we've done that, we're going to put a nice delicate bead on the very top ridge all the way back to line up with our former. Now this should be a familiar step for you as before. We're going to roll this down and press firmly against the table. 
give this about a minute to dry. We're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. Hot glue goes down on the former. If it breaks away from that initial dab, that's okay. We just use that to kind of index where we want it to go. And then right at the very top edge. And then back down on the table. And we're going to hold for about a minute. Our poster board is now on our fuselage. Now if you wish to match these up, because everyone's a little different on how you do it, we don't want to do it just perfect, we can cut from here to here. And I'll show you how to do that. This is elective, it's not going to make your plane fly any better. It's just aesthetic. Line it up. And we're not going to try to go through in one swipe. Very, very light. Should feel it start to go. Let's do it one more time. There we go. Now we have a nice straight edge from tip to tail. Let's do the same process on the other side. Our turtle deck's now done, we're ready to move on to our next step. In this portion of the build, we're going to show you how to mount the top and the bottom of the wings and all the struts that connect them. For installing our wings, we're going to need our side struts and our cabane struts here, along with our upper and lower wing and of course our fuselage. Now, the wing with four holes in it is going to be the one that's going to go on the top. We're going to go ahead and put this aside to make sure we do not glue it on our fuselage right now. This is the bottom and this is the one we want. Let's go ahead and start by doing a quick dry fit. We're going to go ahead and open up this lower panel. We can leave the tape on it. And do it a quick dry fit. It should pressure fit nice and even all the way down in. And sit very nicely on the fuselage. Go ahead and sit it down and what we want to do is we want to sight down the fuselage and make sure that the wing dihedral in comparison to the tail is even. What dihedral is is the amount of angle that the wings are bent up at the tip. Now that we're happy with the way everything fits, we're going to go ahead and apply a healthy generous speed on both portions of the wing saddle. It's more important that the wing is even when it's mounted to the fuselage than it being tight up against both sides of the fuselage. So while you're holding this, just sight down it and make sure that the fuselage looks nice and even to the tail. Once the wing is thoroughly dried, we can tape our lower portion shut again and we're going to put our attention towards the wings. The wing is going to thrust forward, not backwards. So when we mount this, we're going to want to make sure that the front top wing is going to be ahead of the leading edge of the bottom wing. Let's go ahead and test fit this real quick. That looks good. The important thing that we're going to have to do now is we're going to want to make sure when we mount this that this is vertical just like the tail. That it's not perpendicular to the actual wing. So we want to see an angle that's vertical to the tail or parallel with the tail and not perpendicular to the wing. You don't want this, you want this. I'm going to place a bead of glue just like we did with the wing saddle. We're going to press it down into place. And for this step, it's more important that you just simply eyeball it. Because if you put a right angled square on this, it's going to give you the angle of the wing. Hold this for about a minute. We're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. Once our studs are thoroughly dried, we're going to go ahead and test fit this to make sure we're happy with the fit. Now this is going to move around just a little bit and that's okay because once the cabane struts come in, it's going to get much stronger. 
the important thing we want to look for is we want to make sure that the leading edge of the top and the bottom wing are parallel to each other. Once we're happy with that fit, we're going to apply a bead of glue on both top portions of the strut. Put a little bit extra right there. And set our wing back in place. Now it's important while this is drying to make sure that the wing sits as flush as possible to the struts. Give this a good couple minutes to dry nice and firm. And while the glue is also drying, make sure that the leading edge and the trailing edge are parallel to each other. Now that our top wing and bottom wing are joined, we're going to go ahead and reinforce this with these two cabane struts assemblies here. The flatter portion that's more 90 degrees than the rear portion is going to face towards the nose of the plane. You're also going to notice that it just simply won't fit in very well because of the angle cut to the top piece here. We're going to go ahead and just do a dry fit. And we're going to need to remove some material here on the bottom to allow this to curve in and meet this nice and flush. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to make this angle probably about a 20 degree angle. You can also use a sandy block for this step as well. That looks great. Before we glue this down, we're going to do the exact same process on the other side. So because this comes into the fuselage at this angle, this is the surface we're going to remove. There we go. And that looks great. Now before we glue this on, in your kit and also on the plans is a gauge that looks just like this. What this gauge is going to be used for is to make sure that our wing doesn't get too much dihedral or too little dihedral on the top. So we're going to place this in with just enough room to be able to work in between it, but also give us the ability to establish this angle that keeps it nice and parallel. Once we're happy with that fit, put a healthy bead on the top and also the bottom. Now slide this up and into place. And pushing down against our gauge. Not so much it distorts the bottom wing. We're going to press this into place. Make sure with one hand that you support the top cabane and with the other hand that you support the bottom one. We're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side now. Gauge goes in. Same process as before. We're going to apply a bead of glue to the top and also the bottom. The bean strut will go firmly against the top of the wing and then rotate in. It's going to sight down the fuselage, make sure everything looks proper and that the top wing is still centered with the top of the fuselage. After about a minute or two, we can remove our brace and our top and our bottom wing are now joined and we're ready to move to the next step. In this portion of the build, we're going to be assembling our landing gear and also adding on our exhaust detail. 
Now to put our landing gear on, we're going to first get the pieces that we need. We have this main landing gear wire that's included in your kit. You can also get these separately on our store if you're scratch building. We're going to flip over our fuselage and make sure we don't push down hard on the fuselage and damage any of the foam. Now our landing gear wire is roughly 14 and a half inches long, 37 centimeters, and we're going to split that right in the middle at seven and a quarter. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to take our pliers and we're going to grip the wire and we're going to bend it just over 90 degrees. Like that. Once we have our wire bent, we're going to take it to our fuselage and we're going to open this up and we're going to set this down and we're slowly going to bend this open until the center point lines up with the crease in our under cambered wing and both legs of the landing gear go just outside the fuselage. Try to get it as close to the fuselage as possible. Once we have that, we're going to take our fingers and we're going to press this down. Now you notice I'm bringing the fuselage up and I'm not pushing against the table because we don't want to damage it. Once we have that crease, we can open this up and we can take our razor blade and we can cut down through both sides right over top of that crease and on the top edge. We're only going to cut down through to the bottom layer of the paper. Don't go through the bottom layer of the paper. We can take the edge of our landing gear and drag it through and open up that cut just a little bit. Once we have that, we're going to do a dry fit. We're going to press the landing gear wire down, take it all the way over, rotate it 90 degrees, and press it down into place. It's a little bit difficult. You can always take a skewer and press it in. Once we have the marks where our fuselage meets the point of where the landing gear should go, we're going to go ahead and take that mark and we're going to bend it down 90 degrees. We're going to set it back on our fuselage, get our other reference point, and bend that 90 degrees. We're going to do this so when our landing gear is installed, we have a bend right at the point of our fuselage. Once we're happy with that bend, we can go ahead and glue the landing gear wire into our fuselage. We're going to take the tip of our hot glue gun, put it right in our open seam, and put a nice healthy bead of glue. Now we're going to repeat the exact same motion again. We're going to get our one leg in, rotate it down 90, come back with our scrap piece of foam board, and then push that glue right down in, right over the landing gear wire. Now this step is very much similar to our Fokker triplane. We're going to take these landing gear pieces and we're going to put it in its spot against its notch and we're going to do fine adjustments on this landing gear wire until it meets just up with this top notch right here. If you have to do any fine adjustment both ways, now would be the time to do that. Once we have the piece that we like it, we're going to press the wire down into the foam and that's going to give us yet another groove that we can cut. Make sure you don't go through the other side of the paper. And then let's go ahead and test fit it again. There we go. Now you're going to notice that this piece is quite blunt. We're going to go ahead and remove some of the pieces on this side of the, of the landing gear and also some of the foam on the other side of the landing gear where it meets up with the wing. So we're going to take this down to the table and since the fuselage meets it here, we're going to remove a little bit of foam. And then we'll flip it over 180 degrees and since the landing gear meets at an opposite angle, I'm going to go ahead and remove some foam there as well. It doesn't have to be perfect because most of it's going to be covered. Go ahead and do another quick test fit. Should be a little bit tighter and a little bit closer to the fuselage and the wing now. And that looks really good. Now we want this to be popping out just a little bit above. So I'm going to push this landing gear piece off and leave my finger at the point where I need to bend it so it passes right through this notch right here. We're going to bend this down 90 degrees. The easiest way to make sure that you bent your landing gear where it'll track straight is if the wire shaft matches up with the leading edge of the wing. Once we're happy with the fit, we'll do one last test fit. And then we can come back and glue it down. We're going to open up our crack. We'll put two big dots of glue there. and then also on the portions that we beveled. We'll slide it down in place, get our shaft in place, and then press the landing gear up against the fuselage and the wing. We're going to hold it here until it's thoroughly dry. 
All right, we're gonna do the other side. Just to recap, we're gonna bend our wire in place so it lines up with our notch, indent the foam, do our score cut down to the other side of the paper, but not through it. Test fit again. We're gonna cut our bevels. This is the fuselage side, and this is the wing side. One more test fit. We're gonna mark where we want our bend to be, which is right here to pass through the landing gear properly. We'll grip it with the pliers. Bend it down 90 degrees. And do light adjustments until it lines up with the leading edge of the wing. There we go. One last test fit before we glue it. Now that we're happy with the fit, We'll press some glue down into the two slots that we made, along with our beveled edges. This detail is entirely decorative, but it does look fantastic when it's on the airplane. Our last portion before we put the wheels on, is we can flip this over. If there's any need to put any hot glue reinforcement here, we can. And then also, we're gonna put some nice bead of hot glue on both surfaces, along with a little bit in the back. Now we can press this down, tape it down one last time, and let it dry. After everything is thoroughly dried, we can put our wheels on. Now in our previous build with the uh, Fokker triplane, I went ahead and used thin wheels. These are our thicker wheels for our bigger airplanes. You can use either or. If you're looking to fly outside, the thicker ones are nice. If you're looking to fly inside, the thinner ones are nice. We're going to go on here. They're going to be a little bit loose because they're made for our bigger airplanes. But I just like the way they look, a little bit more cartoony. You can use a wheel collar. Or we can simply just drop a, drop a hot glue down right over top here. And let it dry. Once that's thoroughly dried, I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut that piece short. After a minute or so, we can spin the wheel and kind of push it up against that wheel collar. And I like to follow up with just another drop to reinforce it. When it's all dry, we can come back and cut it off. We're gonna repeat the exact same process on the other side. Slide the wheel on, little drop of hot glue, give it a spin, make sure it doesn't glue to the wheels and cut off the excess. All right, one last step before we flip it over. Let's go ahead and take care of our little rear skid here. We're gonna take one of our barbecue skewer pieces and we're gonna cut it about a half inch past the hinge line here. Then beat a glue. and we'll let it dry. While we're putting both functional and scale detail on it, let's go ahead and build a couple of exhaust manifolds that pop out both sides of the fuselage. This is purely decorative, but it looks really good. In our kit, you're gonna see two pieces that look like this. This is one section of our detail for our exhaust. We're gonna simply glue one side over, as you see right here. Now that that's dry, we can take one of our barbecue skewer pieces. I like to use the one that's not the piece that I cut off for the skid. I like to save that for our power pod. And we're gonna cut it to about 10 inches. When you pinch around a barbecue skewer, it'll break nice and clean for you. Once we have that detail, we'll take two little drops of hot glue and glue it on. This is gonna be our little exhaust manifold and this is our exhaust stack that runs back by the pilot. 
Now, if you're going to be painting your plane, don't install these quite yet. You can always test fly your plane and come back and put these on later. Generally, we just paint this all black. When we glue this down, we're going to glue this down so both holes for our power pods gears can be accessed. Just like that. We're going to do the exact same process on the other side now. At this point, our landing gear and exhaust detail are now done. Let's go ahead and move on to put our servos and our power pod in. In this portion of the build, we're going to be installing our power pod, dialing in our radios, get our throws established, and putting on our Velcro. So the first thing that we're going to do when getting our electronics installed is we're going to be installing our power pod. Now you should have already built this earlier in the episode. If you haven't, go back and build it now because it's very important. We're also going to be installing our pre-bound MZ12 and our GR12 receiver. So in this receiver, the ESC is plugged into port number one. This follows the same mapping as Spectrum as well. We're going to reach through and grab our servo wires and pull them out. And by sighting through, we should be able to see the left and the right. This one right here is the rudder, but on a three channel aircraft, it's going to plug into port number two and work as our ailerons. So we're going to go ahead and plug that into port number two. Taking note that the diagram here shows the ground at the top, we're going to make sure on every one of these wires that the brown or the black wire is facing towards the top. The next port is channel number three, that's our elevator. And at this point, making sure we don't have any prop on our power pod, we can power this up and make sure everything moves properly. All right, first thing you heard was the ESC. You notice that when we roll this, the prop is moving counterclockwise, and that's exactly what we want. When we pull back on the stick, we should have an up motion. When we push right, we should have a right deflection. And that's fantastic. Now, along with our kit and also on the plans, we have a little tiny throw gauge that's been included. We're gonna use that throw gauge to make sure that our rates are not too high. Because we have different servo manufacturers and different people are building with different materials, you always want to make sure that you don't go past 12 degrees of deflection. Any more, the plane's going to be a little bit too touchy. The MZ-12 is very easy to use when adjusting things like sub-trim. If your elevator is just a little bit off, rather than using your trims to adjust it, we'll just go ahead and go over to our servo menu. And we can dial our sub-trim up or down. We want to make sure that it's nice and flat. Right there. We'll do the same process on the elevator. There we go. While we have this here, we can go ahead and adjust our travel. We have a low and a high gauge. I would strongly recommend starting and flying with your low with 30% expo. If you followed our build series and follow along, that should be just perfect the way it is. We're using the shortest hole on our forearm servo to get these throws. We're really happy with that. The last thing we want to do, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out and I'm going to go over to dual rates. I'm just going to give myself 30% dual rate. What Expo does is it softens the center of your stick. It's going to make it so the plane's less twitchy when you're doing fine movements. But if you want to do tight loops, barrel rolls, things like that, you'll have plenty of deflection. We can go ahead and power down the whole system. And we'll slide our power pod in. I like the ESC to have plenty of airflow, so I'm not going to put it up in this power pod because there's no air vents on the top. Instead, I'm actually going to let this kind of come around and get the airflow as it passes through the fuselage and out the back end. So I'm just going to simply take the wires, kind of push them down very delicately. And then with a rocking motion, I'm going to push my power pod in. Keep in mind the first fit's going to be the tightest. And we want the whole power pod to be able to sit up hard against the top plate there. Make sure it's not bent down or bent up, but push perfectly horizontal to the plate. Because this area here is going to keep us from moving the power pod up, just take the tip of your barbecue skewer and press in a little bit of a cavity so this has a relief to go into so you're not trying to bend this and kink it. Press this as far back as you need, just make sure that the prop has plenty of clearance to be able to spin without rubbing against the sides. Give it about a good quarter of an inch, and that way you'll get most efficiency and it won't be as loud. 
Now we can take our barbecue skewer and we can pass it through each hole. Now use a twisting motion and don't try to go completely through the fuselage. Only go through one half. We'll do both sides. Get through the doublers and through the power pod. Then come around and do the same process on the other side. Twisting motion helps a lot. Use it like a drill bit. Now we can carefully take it through the other side and pass it all the way through. I'm going to press this just underneath here so I can access it. And I'll take my side cuts, cut it off. Same process again. We're going to pass it completely through. Light twisted motion. And if we did everything right, should pop right out the other side for us. There we go. Press this all the way in. And just cut it just on the other side here. Our power pod's now firmly in place. For installing the receiver, I'm gonna simply just slide this back in so the antenna points towards the back here. I'm gonna kind of poke my wires back in there. Don't push it all the way back to the tail because that's gonna cause unnecessary tail weight. But we want all this to get nice natural airflow. We're gonna leave our little connector. This is an XT30. It's a phenomenal beginner connector. It handles over 30 amps and you can't plug it in backwards like the JST. We love this and we've gone exclusively to both the XT30 and the XT60. Let's go ahead and cut ourselves about a two inch piece of Velcro. This is also included in the kit. And I always have kind of a riddle in my head, it's fuzzy fuselage. And that way I can remember which side to put on so I don't have half my batteries needing a different side. It's a really good tape. We're gonna peel this off and we're gonna apply this right to the bottom of our power pod. There we go. I put the prickly side of the Velcro on the battery. Now when we install our battery, it's just gonna meet nice and flush here. And if we did our job right, when we balance it, which is at the crease on the top here, you're going to notice it's nice and level. Always make sure your plane balances properly before you fly it. If it's not balanced properly, nose heavy or tail heavy, it's not going to fly properly. If you're ever going to favor one way or the other, favor a little bit nose heavy. This looks really good. So at this point, everything is ready. We're going to install our prop and we can go out and take it for a maiden. All right, cannot stress this enough with these minis, especially with the power pods with thrust angles, make sure you have a counterclockwise prop. If your prop doesn't spin counterclockwise, the plane's not gonna fly well. It's only gonna turn one direction and you won't be able to control it. All right. Power this up one last time. Battery goes in. We'll point it away from us and do a little run up. We're ready for a maiden. All right, friends, we are blessed again with another beautiful morning. We are ready to maiden this. A uh, couple key things. You always want to maiden your plane when it's nice, calm winds. Always fly it into the wind. And make sure, once again, your balance, your control throws are all correct. We have a great video link below. Six quick tips for a successful first flight. Make sure you watch that if you've never maiden an airplane before. All right, let's get this in the air.
Friends, I want to sincerely thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to build along with me. I strongly encourage if you haven't tried this yet and you're watching it for the first time, grab some foam, download some free plants, buy a speed build kit, and make a memory. We'll see you next time.